see each one here uh, on this Wednesday evening. And I uh, hope you've had a good week uh, so far. We do want to go to, to the Lord in, in prayer. Uh, uh, Brother Russ, he called me, wants us to uh, have a special prayer for him. He had made a, a request about a, a business decision, and he just wants the, the Lord's will to be done, and he's going to find out tomorrow. Amen. So he wants us to be praying, and he said, whatever God's will is, and he said, just pray the Lord will bless, and God's uh, will uh, will be done. So we honor that request, Brother Russ. We definitely will be praying about that. and. Amen. I'm sure he'll let us know about, about that uh, tomorrow, but he wanted us to remember him especially in prayer. Uh, we do have a praise item. We've been praying for Sister Kay Bergen. Did she get to come out of the... The next day or two. Uh, there at Ivy Hall, she's been in uh, the uh, COVID unit, and if everything continues to improve the way it has, she should get to uh, move out of there in the next day or so. So we praise the Lord for that. We keep praying for her. Let's remember Brother Tom Turner, remember him in prayer, Brother Bobby Garst, lift him up to the Lord, pray for him. Let's remember Sister Brenda, she's with us tonight, but she's got a knee replacement surgery uh, facing her in March, right? So we uh, want to lift her up to the Lord. All of our sick and shut-ins, uh, Rachel Googe, uh, let's see, I, I know there's more. Any other prayer requests? Amen. Amen. Any others? Yes. Just remember Sister Dot. Any others? Amen. Amen. Any others? Yes. Would you remember all of our Bill and grandchildren? Amen. Amen. Yeah, we all need prayer, don't we? Amen. There'll be a time when we won't need it. It won't be while we're living on this earth. When we're in heaven, we won't need it. Amen. Amen. Praise, Praise God. Because mm, we'll be with the Lord. Amen. Anybody looking forward, by the way, seeing Jesus? Amen. I'm getting more homesick every day. You know, I'm feeling more. I'm feeling more like an like a alien in my own country. And uh, I'm just going to say this. I'm going to pray for the help of our leaders. But I'm not going to pray... For God to bless policies that go against his word. Amen. I'm not going to do it. Amen. Amen. What I understand about the Bible. If you go against the word of God. You're going against God. Right. You say preacher that's strong. Listen. He said if we forget God that we'll be cast into hell. He'd cast us into hell. Amen. So hey listen. Like the old preacher. I think he said it he. He, he wasn't too educated in one sense, but in another sense, he was really educated, spiritually educated. And he said it like this. He said, if the Bible's for it, I'm for it. He said, if the Bible's against it, I'm against it. And that's how I feel. I, I don't want to do anything against the truth of God's word. Amen? So, uh, hey, I'm so thankful this book will never change. What's sin... A thousand years ago, it's still sin today. Amen. You can try to paint a pretty picture on it. You can try to whitewash it, but sin is sin in, in, in the sight of God. So we really need to pray. I know it's a, a bunch of people losing their job, and uh, so, but we do really need to pray that, that God, that we would uh, experience a revival. Amen? Amen. Pray that uh, we can see changes. By the way, you know what? We focus too much on what's going on in D.C. We need to focus on what's going on in our homes, in our lives, and in our communities. That's where the change comes from, by the way. Sometimes I think we'd be better off just to turn the news off and not watch it. Well, we got about 10, 15 news stations. <laughs> I prefer the good news. <laughs> it's always good. It don't change. He don't change. Hallelujah. I'm going to get to preaching here in a minute. Oh, anybody in here love the Lord Jesus Christ? Amen. Isn't it good to be saved? Aren't you glad Jesus got you before the Baptist did? <laughs> the Presbyterian did? 
amen, and the Methodist or the Free Will Baptist. I'm glad I know Jesus tonight. Hey, he knows, he knows you. He knows us by name. He claims us. He purchases us. We belong to him. Therefore, I want to honor him. I want to praise him. I want to proclaim him. I want people to see him living his life in and, and through me. Our life isn't worth much if people can't see Jesus in it, is it? So I want people to see the Lord Jesus Christ in my heart and life. Uh, well, let's do pray for our country. Let's pray for our leaders. And it's looking like, uh, you know, things are looking better about the COVID-19. I know we're still having some folk that's uh, pa passing away, but not as many people in the hospitals. And I believe the, the schools are going to be opening up, hopefully maybe full time down the road pretty soon. So, uh, but that, that we do have a lot to thank the Lord for. Uh, any other prayer requests before we pray? Yes, remember my Aunt Virgie Clark. Lift her up to the Lord. Pray for her, Brother Clinton. Yes. 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 All right. So let's remember Brother Varan, remember Lori. And also, Brother Scott was mentioned, wanted us to pray for his nephew, said that Keelan Townsend's uh, going into the National Guard. Is that right? Yes. And that's tomorrow? Uh, he's sworn in today. He's sworn in today. So yes. pray, pray for Keelan. Ask the Lord to, to bless him and, and his family. We're, we're proud of him. And we love him. And uh, I remember when he was just a little boy, he was about two or three years old. Uh, but uh, let's do pray, pray for him. Amen. Brother Kenneth King. Anybody else? God. The Lord's heard them prayers. Amen. That's awesome. We like to hear things like that, Brother Steve. Amen. Anybody, any other prayer request? Any other? How about the unspoken request? All right. There are several. Everybody can and will. Let's have an altar of prayer this evening. Uh, let's remember all these requests. Amen. Brother West, would you open us up in prayer as we all pray together? Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we just thank you for your spirit, Lord, that we have together in your house tonight, Lord. Father, we just lift each prayer request that we're seeking here tonight. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the good news about Sister Kay Bird, and I just ask God you to continue to touch her and Lord, and to bless her, Lord, and keep her in your hands, Lord, and Lord, that she'll just continue to get better, Lord, and touch her body, Father, that she'll just continue to get better. Lord, so many tonight that are sick, Father, those that just need a special touch from you. Father, just be with each family tonight, Lord, that's hurting. Lord, that just so many that tonight, Lord, and I just ask, Lord, you'd be with Sister Brenda, and Lord, if she prepares for this knee surgery, I just ask, oh, Lord, that you just guide the surgeon's hand. Lord, you just take care of this, Lord, and uh, her knee would get feeling better. And Lord, we pray for those, uh, Lord, yeah. and I, Brother Ken. Lord, just so many, Lord, uh, uh, within our congregation tonight, Lord, that are sick and Lord, just need that special touch. And Lord, we pray tonight for our country. Yes, Lord. Lord, give us a greater burden yes, for Lord. our nation. And Lord, we know that, Father, what we need, uh, Lord, is uh, we need you, yes. Lord, in, in, in the midst of all of us. And Lord, I just ask, oh God, that you would just be with our nation tonight. And yes. Help us, Father, that we'd be a country that will turn back yes, to you, Lord. Lord, before it's eternally too late. And Father, Father, we know tonight, Lord, that the real problem in our nation, Lord, is not a 
politicians. Lord, the real problem we have with us, Lord, is our families yeah, are not God. as strong as oh, they need God. to be. Lord, help us, Father, that we can strengthen our families tonight. Lord, that we can love one another. Lord, yeah. we can come together. Lord, what we really need tonight is revival. Yeah. Oh, Father, help us tonight, Lord. Give us a greater burden for revival yeah, tonight, Lord. Lord. And Father, I just ask that you just be with each one that's here tonight. Lord, we thank you for those that were able to come. And Father, yeah, we just ask that you just pour out a special blessing. Yeah. Lord, I know there's not a lot of us, but Lord, I know that you're here in the midst yes, with us tonight. Lord. Lord, we're thankful tonight for your presence. Yes. Lord, most of all tonight, we lift up these precious people yes, tonight, Lord, Lord, that raised their hand and said, pray for the lost loved ones in our family. Lord, we all have them. And Father, I just yes. ask tonight, Lord, that you just help us. Lord, give us a stronger witness. Lord, help us and others will see you in our lives, yes, Lord. Lord, and glorify our Father which is in heaven. Lord, I'm worried tonight about our little children. Yes. Father, my heart's broken tonight, Lord, at what country yes. they may grow up oh, in. My. Oh, Lord, I just ask, Lord, that you just set moms and dads' souls afire, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, just set them afire that they yes, see their children Lord. in church. Yes. Lord, here's where they need to be, yes. Father. And Lord, we just ask, oh, Lord, Lord, you just get a hold of them. Lord, help us, Lord, that yes. we can reach them before it's determined too late. Oh, Lord, give us a greater burden tonight for the lost. Yes, Lord. Lord, give us a greater burden, Lord, that we seek you in our lives. Yes. Father, thank you tonight for giving us this privilege to yes, be here. Lord. Lord, that we could come in this house tonight, Lord, and worship you. I'm thankful, yes. Lord, that we have this opportunity. Lord, I'm heartbroken tonight for those that, that don't have the health to be here. Yes. Lord, I just pray that you just touch each one. And Lord, we thank you. Lord, we praise you for all that you've done for us. And Lord, all that you're going to continue to yes, do. Lord. So Lord, just be with us in our time together. Lord, as we open your word tonight, help us, Lord, to live open our ears and hearts yes, tonight. God. Lord, to the preaching of your word. Father, we love you. Lord, we thank you. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank God. It's always good to pray. Isn't it? Amen. Amen. Can't pray too much. That's right. Amen. Can't praise him too much. Can't serve him too much. Can't exalt him too much. Amen. Amen. Well, open your Bibles with us. We are in chapter 3 of 1 uh, Peter. And we're going to pick up with uh, verse number uh, 8. I'm going to try my best for us to get maybe down to verse 17. I don't think we'll be able to get through the whole chapter. Uh, if, if we do, we'll, we'll thank God for that. But uh, what we're looking at here, beginning with verse 8 of chapter 3, and it goes all the way to chapter 4 and verse 11, is the character of the Christian community in a hostile world. Oh, boy, sounds a lot like... Uh, time we're living in, don't it? I do really uh, expect for things to get more hostile toward us Christians. Amen. And uh, especially when we're commanded to accept some things that uh, goes against the word of God. I, I, gotta, I gotta stick with the word of God. Amen. It might land me in jail. It might put me before a firing squad. It might Put me on, put my head, neck, and a rope, and get hung. But hey, I I don't want I don't want to deny my Lord. I want I want to remain true and steadfast. It's not time to be a coward. It's time to be brave. Amen. I'm not talking about being foolish and and doing stupid things. I'm just talking about being light Amen. and being salt to to this world. Uh, well, let's let's start reading verse number eight. We looked at uh, wives and husbands uh, last week. And so notice what Brother Peter says. He says, finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion of one another. Love as brethren. Be pitiful. Be courteous. Not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing. But contrary wise, blessing, knowing that 
ye are thereunto called. Look at that there. Knowing that ye are thereunto called. God don't want us fussing and fighting all the time. God don't want us cursing anybody. God wants us to bless people. It's what Brother Peter says here. I want to be a blessing. How about you? Amen. I don't want to be a hindrance. I don't want to be a stumbling block. Oh, amen. I, I want to be a blessing. And all that that entails. So he says here that we're, we're, we're called to that. And then look at this. That you should inherit <laughs> a blessing. Don't, if you lose anything down here, don't, don't let that make you miserable because you got another inheritance, and I do too. That's waiting for us in heaven. Amen. All right. Then we come to verse number 10. For he that will love life and see good days, mm -hmm, let him refrain his tongue from evil. And his lips that they speak no God, let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open <laughs> unto their prayers. But... The face of the Lord is against them that do evil. And I love this here. And who is he that will harm you if ye be followers of that which is good? But and if ye suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are ye. And be not afraid of their terror. Neither be troubled, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready. Everybody say, be ready. Be ready. Say it again. Be ready. be ready always. Wow. My goodness. Be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear, having a good conscience, that whereas they speak evil of you as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. That word conversation there means conduct or behavior. For it is better if the will of God be so, that you suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. I'm just going to go ahead and read the rest of the chapter. For Christ also hath once suffered for sins. Notice once. That will never be done again. One Once was enough. The just, that's Jesus. For the unjust, that's you and me. For, we, for he made us just before he saved us. That he might bring us to God. Amen. Being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit, by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison, which sometime were disobedient, when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was a preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls, were saved by fire, the like figure wherein to even baptism doth also now save us, but uh, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God. Angels and authorities and powers. Wow. <clears throat> Angels <laughs> and authorities. And powers, notice that's in the plural, being made subject unto him. Amen. Amen. 
This is the word of the Lord. That, that was worth just coming to church, just Amen. reading the blessed word of God there. Amen. What we need for tonight, what we need for our present Christian life. So let's go back to the Lord in prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, we ask that you bless our time together, Lord, as we study your word. I ask that you would help me remember that that I've studied, and may the Holy Spirit anoint me. Uh, Lord, may we help us to rightly divide uh, thy word of truth. We thank you, Lord, for our lesson tonight, and, and Lord, may we take it to heart, and, and Lord, may we live out your word that others might see you, Lord Jesus, living your life in us and through us. Lord, have your sweet will and way. We'll praise you for what you accomplish in Jesus' name. Amen. So as we look at the character of the Christian community in a hostile world, first thing I want to share with you is the need, Peter talks about the need for a harmonious and caring community. He's been addressing special groups. He now turns his attention to the community as a whole. Peter moves from concern about Christians' lives in the world to their lives in a hostile world. We know the Bible tells us that all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. You're going to suffer. I'm going to suffer. But let's just make sure we're not suffering for wrongdoing and let's make sure we're suffering for doing good. We're suffering because of our uh, convictions of the word of God. So we see here, from here on, the matter of persecution is not far from the surface of what Peter is uh, writing to these Christians. And the first thing that the Christian community needs in facing opposition is its own inner harmony and love within the fellowship of believers. If there's anywhere that we should be encouraged, anywhere that we, sh we should feel loved, anywhere where we should be uh, cheered up and where we should be helped, it is among the people of God in the fellowship and the assembly of the saints. Amen. We notice that Peter makes an appeal in verses 8 and 9. Notice the word finally. It, that it literally means the end or, or the goal. Here Peter seems to mean that what he's about to say represents the completion of what he's been saying about the lives of believers as pilgrims in this world. The emphasis will be on the community's inner life that fortifies it against the world even when that world is hostile. There's a list of qualities that should characterize all Christians as part of the fellowship. We see this in the first few verses that we read. Uh, Peter says, be of one mind or like minded. Christians should have unity in our basic mindset, harmony of purpose, being of the same disposition. Then the second quality is, he said, be compassionate. This, this literally means suffering or, or feeling with or being sympathetic with, with another brother or sister in Christ. The third quality is we are told, and he told them, and this is still good for us today, he says we're to love one another. This is a love among Christians as fellow members of the family and the body of Jesus Christ. So love. We got the love of God in us. We got the Holy Spirit is shed abroad. The Bible says the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. So we should love one another. Amen. And then a fourth quality. He says we're to be pitiful. And that word pitiful means tender hearted. The word suggests kindness from one's internal organs. Or in the King James Version, that's where we get the word bowels. You know, we read about the bowels 
uh, of compassion. A person with this quality is responsive from his innermost being to the needs of others. Brother Paul talked about this in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse number 32. Notice what Brother Paul told the Christians at Ephesus. He said, and be ye kind one to another. Didn't say unkind. He said, be ye kind. God's people ought to be the kindest people in the world. Be ye kind one to another. Tender hearted. And then he says this, forgiving one another. Even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Then we read in the Gospels about our Lord Jesus Christ. And it says this, when Jesus was around people and the multitudes, you'll see this, it says several times in the Gospels, being moved with compassion. When we are moved with compassion, we're being like our Lord Jesus Christ. And, and we know God wants us to be that way. Then there's a fifth quality, and that's the word be courteous. The word courteous there, it means friendly, be friendly. The word speaks of one who's kindly disposed to others. Following these five qualities, Peter describes yet another important quality. Only now, he turns to what was apparently the main thing that was on his mind. The response of believers to those outside the Christian community. Especially <laughs> when we're mistreated. I know I have to pray a lot about this. When I hear things that I'm opposed to, I got, I got to watch myself. Before I know it, man, I'm open my mouth up. How about you? There's things that, hey, would you ever dream that we'd be living in a society today and that our government would be upholding somebody changing their sex, being transgender? Like that's, like that's normal. No, my friend, it's not normal. Amen. Well, preacher, President Biden said so. I don't care what President Biden said. It's not normal. Amen. It's abnormal. I believe the sex that you're born with is the sex you ought to remain. Amen. But you see, <laughs> we have to watch how we act and how we react to others. You see, we don't serve the same God that this world serves. The Bible says the God of this world is Satan. We're serving the Lord. And we go according to what the Bible says. Amen? But when we're mistreated, uh, we need to be careful how, how we, we react. And he gives us, uh, Peter does a negative and a positive side to this command. On the negative side, when evil's done to us, we're not to return it back. Notice the word rendering. It means giving back, paying back, exchanging. And it's ongoing action to indicate committing practice. The word evil here uh, in our lesson is a general word for what's bad, injurious, harmful. Probably used of, to mean being wronged. When you and I are wronged, as Christians, we shouldn't return it back. Amen. If we're in the flesh, we will. That's why we need to be in the spirit. And notice he talks about railing. Railing is the same as reviling. We don't return verbal abuse for verbal abuse. Instead of returning... Uh, wrong and verbal abuse as Christians you and I should be returning blessing to speak kindly and benevolently to all invoking God's graciousness on a person we will never win sinners to Christ by being mean <laughs> or bullheaded or unkind I'm not saying uh, to compromise in, in our faith and our beliefs and, and, and our standards. No. But we can be graceful about it. Amen. We can be loving and kind. Amen. Some of us, 
takes a little more of effort. Some of us maybe not so. So, so he says here in the need for a harmonious and caring community, Peter makes uh, an appeal and then he gives a scriptural backing for it. He's, he's actually quoting Psalm chapter 34 of verses 12 through 16. As a community, we as Christians, we share a, a oneness of a mindset, a common way of thinking and purpose. You say, well, where's our common way of thinking and purpose? Well, it's, it's found in the Bible. That's why we have Sunday school. That's why we have Bible study on Wednesday night. That's why we have preaching on Sunday morning and Sunday night. It's because we need to be instructed from the Word of God. And that's where we find how we should think, how we should live. And thank God, I'm glad that God's people have a purpose. Our God's a God of purpose. And then secondly, we share an identification with one another in feeling. Thirdly, we share our love for each other as brothers and sisters in the family of God. Fourthly, a tenderheartedness that makes each of us responsive to and move to action by others' needs. And then fifthly, we share a sense of considerateness that leads to kind provision of each other. Thank God if we know that there's a need within this local uh, body, we address that need. We might not be able to take care of all that need, but whatever we can do, we, we try uh, to take care of one another. That, isn't that what God's people do? Amen. If God puts someone on your heart to pray for, He wants you to pray for them. If God puts someone on your heart to give a call to or to uh, send them a text or whatever, do that because that person may really stand in need of some encouragement during that uh, period. God wants, hey, God don't work on one end and not work on the other end. He works on both ends. All right. So we've seen the need for a harmonious and caring community. And then secondly, and this will probably be, uh, we'll probably close with this, verses 13 through 17. We also want to look at the church's attitude. Oh, Lord help us. The church's attitude under the threat of persecution. All right. Well, he talks about in verses 13 and 14, we have a freedom from troubling, or we're to have a freedom from troubling fear. Peter's question, look at that verse 13 and 14. Let's just look at 13 right now. Read that with me. And who is he that will harm you if ye be followers of that which is good? Peter's question here is almost an exclamation. It ties directly to what he's just said about the fact that the Lord himself, amen, the Lord himself is watching over those who are his and is set against evil doers. Brother Peter is telling, he's, he's asking that question and he's saying, listen, don't worry about the consequences. Don't doubt the goodness and the kindnesses and the grace of God. God, if you will honor Him, if you will do what is right, no one can take away the joy and the peace and the righteousness and the hope and the strengths of God that is in your heart. Amen. Another way of saying it, we can go to what Brother Paul said. If God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. We just need to make sure we're lined up with the Lord. Right. We need to make sure that we're living a life that's worthy of the name of uh, Christ. Amen. 
Because that's what Christian means. It, it means to be Christ-like. Can people see Jesus in you and in me? Guess what? If they're not seeing Jesus in us, that means they're seeing the devil. Hey, there's no middle ground. Jesus said we're either for him or we're against him. He, he said you can't serve both God and mammon. If you're not gathering, Jesus said, if you're not gathering with me, he said you're scattering. You can't have two masters. We have only one master, amen. amen. And his name is Jesus Christ. He, he's telling his fellow believers... He's encouraging them here. You make sure you're living a life that pleases God. You're doing what's right by God's power and His grace. And don't let the future threats or the persecutions, don't dwell on that. Don't think about that. Because you know what? If the devil can get us to thinking about all those things, well, he can convince us to quit church or to turn away from the Lord. And my friend, we don't need to turn away from the Lord. We need to turn to the Lord. Amen. If you're backslidden, you need to turn back to him. So he's saying, just make sure that you're following that which is good. You're you're obeying the Lord. But then he says in verse number 14, but, all right, we live in a real world, don't we? I know there's some ministers and people call themselves prophets and they've uh, fooled a lot of people into thinking that if you just say the right things and you do the right things, you'll never have any problems, you'll never have any temptations, you, you'll never have any troubles, you'll never have any persecutions. My friend, that just don't line up with Holy Scripture. Amen. You're going to be confronted with people that don't believe the way you do, people that don't love the Lord. They're blinded, their minds are blinded by the God of this world, which is Satan. Amen. That's why they need to see Christ. They need to be able to look at your life and my life and let that get a hold of them and even think, wow, how they handle things. I wish I could handle things the way that person does. Amen? Amen. God help us. All right. So we see that uh, we can have freedom from troubling fear. But then we see in verse number 15. Remember now we're looking at the church's attitude under the threat of persecution. In verse 15, we should have a readiness to witness to the hope that we have within our hearts. Not only should we be untroubled by fear of what men can do to us, we should also be prepared. When he talks about giving an answer, what he's talking about is we should be prepared to defend our confidence in Christ. How do you cope with things in life? I notice there's times when everybody else may be hanging their heads down and everybody else just seems so confused and, and so miserable, but you don't appear to be that way. Can I ask you why? And that will give you a platform and, and an opportunity to be a witness Amen. and let them know it's not me. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. It's the King of glory that lives in my heart. He died for me on a cross. When I was a nobody, he made me a somebody. When I was a loser, he made me a winner. When I didn't have any hope, he gave me hope. Where I had death, he gave me life. I owe it all to Jesus. Amen. And this same Jesus that's helped me cope will also help you in your life. Amen. If you'll call upon him in faith believing, if you realize you're a sinner, 
Jesus died for you on the cross, shed his blood for your sin. He, he died, he was buried. On the third day, he arose from the dead. And this Jesus Christ, he's alive right now in heaven at the right hand of God the Father. And he wants to make you alive if you'll call on him and be saved. Amen. Believe that God raised him from the dead. We should be able to give an answer, a reply. And, and notice he says we should be ready to do that anytime. Anywhere, any place. All right. So our attitude under the threat of persecution, we should have freedom from troubling fear. We should be ready to be a witness for our Lord. Every opportunity that we have, every door that's open. But then thank God I'm glad that we can have a conscience clear of wrongdoing. Amen. Look back at verses 16, 17. He says, we'll be able to tell the hope that's in us a reason. We know Jesus is that reason. He saved us. He's keeping us. He said, of the hope that is in you, thank God. How I many glad you got that hope in you, Christ, Christ in you? The hope of glory, thank the Lord. Amen. That is in you with meekness and fear. Read verses 16, 17 with me. Let's read it out loud together. Having a good conscience. Aren't you glad you can have a good conscience? Because of the Lord. That whereas they speak evil of you as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. For it is better if the will of God be so that you suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. Let's try to sort of sum, sum all of this up. Having forbidden his readers from any kind of retaliation, Peter proceeds to describe what ought to be their attitude and the response to any kind of hostility that they might experience. Indeed, the very first thing is to ask whether anyone can, in fact, do ultimate harm to those who devote themselves to the practice of what is good. That is where we're going to see change. He's, he's asking that question. Remember I said it's almost like an exclamation. He, he, and, and the answer is, who can harm you and I if we be followers of that which is good? And the answer is, no one can. The answer is no. There is in fact nothing to fear from men. Even if we're called on to suffer for righteousness' sake, our favored state with God has already been pronounced on us. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Did you get what I just said? Our favored state with God has already been pronounced on us and the devil and the persecutors or the prosecutors can't take that away. Amen. I'm glad, I'm glad it's like that, aren't you? Amen. All right, now, let's go on. It remains true, therefore, that as Christians, you and I need not experience any upsetness or fear from hostile threats. You know, since we've been going through all this COVID-19 and all the disruption and all the division and all the confusion that, that, that is going on uh, throughout uh, our lives during this time in 2020 and then in, even into 2021, all uh, of the uncertainties that, that are surrounding us, my friend, uh, we don't need to be afraid of that. Don't let it upset you. Don't be afraid of anything or anybody. There is a verse, thank God, that comes to my mind whenever the enemy tries to intimidate me or the enemy tries to get me to doubt my Lord or to even be afraid. And it's what Paul told Timothy. For God hath not given us a spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind.
life. Listen, we have Jesus Christ. He conquered Satan on the cross. He won victory for us. He died for us. He was buried for us. He arose for us. And he lives for us. He intercedes for us. He loves us. He cares for us. He's conquered all powers, all thrones, all dominions. And someday every knee's going to bow to him. And every tongue is going to confess to him that he is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying our Lord is victorious. And this victorious Christ is not only victorious at the throne of God at his Father's right hand. He's victorious in your life. He's victorious in my life. Amen. Let me just say something to our people. I feel like I need to say this. To everyone that might be watching on live stream. We miss you. Amen. We want you back. We understand your concern. But I'm praying and I'm hoping. That many of you. Real soon. Will come back and be with us. Because we miss you. I just feel like I need to say that. Amen. Amen. I believe, hey, listen, there's going to come a time you just got to make a decision. Amen. Hey, there could come a time, I don't know, it could happen here in America when they tell us you can't have church anymore. Or they try to padlock the doors and say you can't worship. Well, my friend, if they do that, I'm going to be here. Amen. The door is going to be open. You say, preacher, they'll lock you up. that would be all right. Amen. Isn't it sad? There's places in this world right now where you can't worship the Lord openly. And this is where we're headed if we don't experience a great revival here in America. They're trying to pass bills that if you stand against certain sins, that that's a hate crime, you can't do it. Well, I got news for you, friend. I'm going to do what the Bible says. I'm going to say what Jesus said. I'm going to go with the Word of God because someday I'm not going to stand before you. I'm going to stand before the Prince of Peace and the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and I'm going to give an account to Jesus Christ and I don't want him telling me I wasn't faithful to preach and teach the whole counsel of his Word. Amen. Preacher, you're being divisive. No, I'm not. I'm saying we need to be Christians. And you do not have to live in a spirit of fear and defeat. Amen. Where's your faith? Amen. Who's your faith resting in? You say, well, it's resting in the vaccine. Well, the vaccine don't help everybody. It helps most people. What are you saying? What I'm saying, friend, it comes down to a, a matter of personal faith in Jesus. That's what it comes down to. We love you, we miss you, and we want to see you back. Amen. If you're watching this and you've never been to Milligan, we'd like to have you with us. Amen. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying what the Bible says. Not to forsake the assembly of yourselves together. Amen. Amen? God wants us to meet and assemble together. Amen? Amen. All right. We love you. We miss you. I hope you'll come back real soon. All right. So, we don't need to be upset by any threats from the world. Instead, we should fear our holy Lord in the sanctuary of our hearts and be ready at all times to provide a response explaining the basis and the nature of our confident expectation of salvation to anyone who asks us to give an account with a meek and fearing disposition. I am amazed at how timely and efficient God's holy inspired word is in our lives. Our Lord orders our steps in his word 
giving us holy light and understanding in living our individual lives, especially among a hostile environment. You've heard me say many times from this pulpit in the last few years, we've been spoiled in the United States of America. Amen. And I'm afraid we have taken our liberties and our freedoms for granted. Amen. We're going to see who the true Christians are when they tell you you can't. Amen. Well, I'm going to tell you something. You might tell me I can't, but if the Lord tells me I can't, I'm going to go with the Lord. Amen. Well, preacher, what if it's just you? It won't be just me. Amen. Sister Kathy will be with me. She loves the Lord. Amen. These two gentlemen, this precious couple right here and everybody here, they'll be here. Amen. Do you know what? God will be here. Amen. The Trinity. Amen. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. <laughs> All three Amen. in one. Amen. Hey. My Lord's not coming for a defeated, dead church. He's coming for a lively, victorious church. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Anybody glad you come to church? Amen. All right, now, I'm, I'm, I'm going to hasten on here. The thing that just has overwhelmed me in my studying and in the Bible study, it just seems that, uh, and I've talked to Brother Wes about this, and Sister Kathy about this, it seems that God has orchestrated and God has led us in going through these epistles in, in this portion of the New Testament. God's ordained it because he knew we needed it. I need more, don't you? I want more. All right. I want to provide you some helpful tips. I'm not going to speak long on these. You might want to write these down. Some helpful tips on how we should face those who ridicule and resist us. Lord, help us. I've got seven, so listen to them right here. Number one, we should concentrate more on doing good, even to our tormentors than on the prospects of persecution. You'll see that in verse 13. Number two, we should rejoice when suffering because of righteousness and the Lord's pronouncement of blessing. That's in verse 14. Number three, we should not be terrorized or intimidated by this world's threats. But instead, we should fear our holy God that lives in our hearts. Amen. Verse 14, 15. Number four, Lord help us here. We should always be quick to take opportunity to speak up about the basis and the nature of our Christian hope, though in a meek and submissive manner. Verse 15. Number five, remember, these are some helpful tips on how we should face those who ridicule and resist us. Number five. We should be sure by our good conduct that we have clear consciences and are not suffering for our own wrongdoing. All right? Verse 16. Number six. I love this. We can take heart in knowing that those who malign us will ultimately be put to shame in the very thing they have accused us about verse number 16 and then seventhly and finally we can also find encouragement in recognizing the difference between suffering and doing good and suffering in doing wrong let's bow our heads heavenly father in jesus name we thank you for your word lord i've done my best to obey you and I ask, Father, that you will help us be more sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Help us, Lord, to be more obedient to your word. Lord, help us not to revile others that revile us. Lord, when someone shows hatred toward us, help us, Lord, to love them sincerely and genuinely. Because, Lord, we know there's many people are suffering in this world. They need your love. They need the hope that only Christ brings. 
Lord God, help us to live a life that brings glory and honor to Jesus Christ, that brings blessing to those, Lord, that need it. And we all need blessings. Help us, Lord, to be true in these last days. Lord, in this time that, of transition that's going on in our country, we're very concerned, Lord, of, about what's going on. But help us, Lord, not to be uh, so uh, disturbed by it and upset by it that we would fail to be the salt and the light that you have saved us and called us to be in this world. Help us, Lord, to be true to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Glad you come out tonight. Everybody have a great night. And we'll see you, Lord willing, this coming Sunday. Uh, 11 a.m. worship service, and then we'll also be having 6 p.m. worship service on Sunday night. God bless you. You're dismissed.